see. My, uh, my wife and I, we've been um, making custom saddles, making custom saddles for customers for a couple of years now with the idea they sign waivers and do not hunt in elevated positions and all the other warnings that you used to see on some of the other companies that popped up. Well, about six, seven months ago, we got the bright idea. We knew we made strong enough equipment. We were comfortable hunting at elevation with it. So we uh, decided, let's let's make a run at it. Do some testing. Prove that our stuff's safe to use in an elevated position. And uh, we'll try to make our saddle for the masses. So uh, we just got back from a trip to Central Georgia where we went to a third-party independent testing facility. The ideas were to do some drop tests, some strength and tensile breaking strength tests for uh, the equipment that we plan on selling because we wanted to know that it was safe for you. And uh, our results we couldn't be happier with. This saddle right here was one of the saddles that we used in some of the testing. Still got the writing on it from the guy where we used the test procedure. Uh, we did a 220 pound drop test face first. Fall was a little over four and a half, five feet. As you can see, nothing on the saddle broke. Not a single stitch was torn. Nothing. Everything's still good, stiff, strong, and flexible. So we didn't believe in hype marketing or doing anything else. We thought we'd uh, show y'all some of the tests and let speak the results speak for themselves. As we stated, these tests are done at a one and a half to two fall, two to one fall factor. That's a worst case scenario of falls, and you should never ever find yourself in this position. Do not climb above your tether or your linesman belts at any point. Do not ever leave 18 to 20 inches of slack in your system as a fall from that magnitude could result in serious injury or death. So we do not suggest that. What we do suggest is that you follow all manufacturing instructions and you use your equipment safe and efficiently so that you can be an elevated, a safe elevated hunter. One of the things that we wanted to do too is there's a lot of questions about AM steel and its, uh, its usability. How come arborists themselves don't use it? How come you know, some companies do and don't. Why are some only uh, using Crew 6? What's the best friction hitch? The Zam still with the low coefficient, how is its melting point, etc. We knew AM still had a low melting point, but we also know that with a low rope coefficiency, its ability to generate heat is lower. We, we know that when it's braided all the way back through itself on a splice, creating an effective double braid, that it bites down the cinches really, really well. So uh, one of the tests that we performed was instead of just taking a piece of quarter inch am steel that was fully spliced back into itself eye to eye and doing a pull and getting a, a fake static pull of something like a thousand or 11,000 pounds, 12,000 pounds, which is what you would get because 7,700 pounds breaking strength and loop configuration, you're gonna get a 1.5 factor or higher. We decided to test ours with the friction hitch in place so we could pull it and see exactly how strong that knot is or how much it would slip before it melted and burned and dropped you. And the results were surprising. When hooked in a loop configuration form where it went in basket like we do in the actual saddle, it went over the top and we girth hitched our two ends back to the lower pull. And the tensile machine actually pulled this particular bridge which came off of this saddle it had already been dropped one time for a high fall factor and we wanted to again real world results if I had used something brand new and it's never been used so with our particular bridge we left the friction hitch on after we had dropped it from the saddle we took everything apart we put it in loop configuration we girth hitched the bottom the same as we do when we were using it so we could get real world results and we were in shock at the results we got um, the tensile machine was able to pull 
the Amstel Bridge to around 7,500 pounds. And at that point, nothing broke our, uh, our Blake's hitch, which is the friction knot that we use to attach our saddle. The Blake's hitch started to slide at 7,500 pounds of force and effectively melted the rope in to itself. So people were like, well, you're crazy. Why would you show this? Well, because I want no fake marketing, none of that stuff. I want people to see real world application. Real world application is your Blake's hitch starts to slip around six, seven inches and it will melt itself in together. For the record, this rope still held over, over 6,000 pounds with it melted into itself like that. So now effectively it's a fixed bridge. That knot will not slide. But you would get to 7,500 pounds before you got this knot to slip. We did some uh, tensile and brake strength testing with our carabiners. We got a, a tactical D force model from SMC. We got also uh, some custom tactical D style carabiners that were in, in the works. We wanted to test them. Both of these carabiners were dropped on different saddles before we took them into the lab for the tensile. So they went through drop test and then the same day they got the tensile breaking strength test done. Both of these carabiners held to over 7,000 pounds and the machine had to actually be readjusted and set and on the second pull after going to over 7,000 pounds which is more than 31 kilonewtons that they're rated for. They finally broke around, one of them at 5,600 and the other at 63. But that was, again, after it stretched over 7,000 pounds and drops. The uh, SMC carabiner broke at, I believe it was 5,640. And it broke right here where the lift, where the screw gate latches. And on our custom ones, they didn't actually break the screw gate piece itself crack and allowed it to slide out for the fail. But again, both of these carabiners went to over 7,000 pounds and were also dropped prior to these breaking strengths. So we're pretty confident that these light aluminum carabiners are some of the strongest out there. Our, uh, after drop tests, some of our linesman ropes and our tethers, we're still able to break the Prusix loose on some, depending on the drop and the weight that the thing had, 220 pound or 300 pound drop tests that generated over 3,000 pounds of force. We were still able to move our friction hitches. They still held. Our lines were ropes and our uh, tethers are made for us by custom from Blue Water Ropes. And uh, they're 10 millimeter, but when you hold them up, they, they generate their measurements for their ropes at a, at a static sitting position. They don't do it under load the way other companies do. So it's a very small 10 millimeter, closer to a nine. And uh, the Prusik is a seven millimeter. It's about the size of a lot of other six millimeter Prusiks. So over 5,000 pound breaking strength on this, over 3,200 pounds on the Prusik, and they bite down incredibly well. A 300 pound, drop test it was used on this one here and as you can see the person did bite down into itself incredibly hard but your slippage was less than seven inches and uh, I can actually break that thing loose and there was bend and pull in the rope and in the person but it was not damaged to the point that we wouldn't be able to safely get back down or something like that. So we're, uh, we're pretty happy with the results and we hope after watching this video some of you will be happy with the results too. For your questions or comments you can uh, reach us at woodtreesaddles.com or you can call the number on our website we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have and our uh, saddles should be on sale within, to the public, the general public, within the next, say, 10 days. Thank you, and you have a great day.